opening the hood. Look who that guy is. Hello everybody. Good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know. I am super glad to be here. We are returning to looks like a part three video of the front end rebuild on that Ford F250 all the way on the other side of the shop over there. See, uh, see it on the rack? We've got the whole front end apart on that unit. And it all started with this binding universal joint right here. The customer complaint was that the vehicle would uh, bind while steering and uh, it would either steer left and stay there or steer right and then stay there. Uh, what we had found out is there was a bit of a uh, little bit of play in the steering, uh, steering components on this truck, but this drive axle, which is located inside the front axle housing, had a seized U joint. It turns this way, but if I try to go up and down with it, it is, uh, it's not going to happen. So we've got a seized up U-joint due to lack of grease. You see the grease dirt right there, full of dirt. So I've got uh, replacement U-joints, they are here. I have the seal, which is here. This is the vacuum seal for the front locking hub. Um, the problem is, is this requires a, uh, a special installation tool. It's a big hammer on kind of unit thing. You'll see it when it gets here. I don't have that yet. I'm actually going to drive to Lakeland to pick it up uh, as soon as I leave here today. But that's not gonna stop us from making a boatload of progress on this truck. So just like with the fifth ball joint, we're going to uh, employ the use of the ball joint press tool in order to press in and press out uh, those U-joints on that inner axle over there. So let's get this thing set up. We need to go fetch, uh, need to fetch my U-joint. We, uh, we've already soaked this down with some, uh, some sealant. I need a hammer, I need a pry bar and uh, we'll see how this goes right here. I said sealant, I meant lubricant. We've already saturated this with some rust penetrating lubricant. There we go, words. Hammer cam! Not really, we're just walking back over here. So I fetched the linear impact driver. We've got the moderate pry bar. We have a universal joint. Some pliers in case I need them. We've got the ball joint press. So let's get to work in pressing this unit out in order to get the new unit pressed in. Let's see what we have here in our, in our package. These are monstrous U-joints. Look at that thing. That's a beast. Like the size of my hand. It comes with, looks like one, two, three, four retainer clips for the cups. And then it's got our Zerk fitting so this thing can be greased in the future. Now using our vise from Hazard Fraught, we're going to hang on to this axle. Like so, we'll get it set up in the vise here in there lock her down this thing is heavy too it's got some gravity in it like lots of it ah, i caught my shirt stop doing that right about feels good right about there get her locked in a couple of hammer taps here send it Very good all right now i think i want to remove the outer yoke first then we'll do the inner or then we'll remove the uh, actual u-joint then we'll install the new one then we'll add the outer yoke to it that's kind of going to be the plan here so one of the first things that needs to happen here is we need to drive out these retainer clips that are recessed into a groove in the u-joint cup okay, there's our new u-joint you see that groove in it right there We're supposed to snap these rings over that groove and they will keep that cup from walking out of its flange we need to get in there and remove the uh, the old ones. That way we can press this thing out. They're probably rusted in pretty good. But if we get the right angle on it here, we can hit it out with a hammer. Yep, there she goes, see it? Coming right out. Get around the back side on it here. Just pop that guy right out of its home. That's one down. And uh, three to go. Get this one here. Come out. Please come out. Come out now. Come out later. Hmm. All right, let's just try a different punch here. It's a little longer. It might give me a better angle of attack. Or not. 
Oh yes, there it goes. Yeah, it's all about that angle of the dangle. Get out of there. All right, that's that one. And the other two, that might be fun. Let's see here, I gotta rotate this unit some. So this lubricated rust grease business here is kind of uncomfortable to the touch. So I'm gonna get some gloves on. It's too, uh, it's too humid today. It's one of those days. Grab toss. Came right at me. So let's see, how do I set you up? Where I can get a good angle of attack on those uh, those other little clips. I know. Just set the whole yoke in there like that. There. Okay. You can barely see it. There's a bunch of sh like crust stuff in there, but we'll get it out. I wonder if I should pull that seal off first. Give me some more space to work with. Sure, you can do that, yeah. Changing directions. There, now that seal's out of the way, maybe I can get some better access to uh, those little clips in there, if I can see them. It's a bunch of, bunch of dirt caked in. I know you're in there, little seal. Or seal. Man, my words are way off today. Clip. I'm looking for a clip. It's because I was just working on a seal, that's why. That pesky word association is in this. Let's see here. Did that one come out? No. Let's try the other punch again. Yeah, that one's very crusted in. There we go, got a bite on it. See it right there? That one's out. I'm getting good at this. There we go, number four. Released. So, let's take this guy, move it on. Let's raise it up some, I think, like right here. Lock it down again. That's enough space to get my, uh, ball joint press in position here. Now I wonder, that's not gonna be large enough, I don't think. Yeah, see that? The cup does not pass through the hole in the ball joint, so I need to put some kind of adapter over this. So when I press this through, the cup has somewhere to go. I think it's gonna be a socket for the wind. That's uh, large enough to fit over the, uh, the U-joint, so we're gonna hold a socket on one side, put the C-clamp on the other side, and then press the whole unit straight through. It's either uh, it's gonna work or eh, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna work because this is too long. We'll get the shorter one. We're going to configure this properly. Here's what I meant. So we've got a short one, and we've got this longer one that sticks out some, and they both sit flat inside of the threaded portion of the press. So we'll use this one. That should give us a wee bit of extra space here. I hope it's enough. So if it's not enough, then I've got to rethink my strategy yet again. And that's not enough. Okay. So, as a backup, I have another cone here. Maybe this one will be sufficient. It's actually almost a little bit too big. I fear it may want to slip off of the uh, U-joint over here. Let me show you. Zoom it in. Circumnavigate. Yeah, see that? There's some gap action going on. It might be sufficient to start off with, but we'll have to readjust, I think. All right, we've got a half-inch impact coming in with a 22. It's going to go on the end of our tool here, and let's start the press action. See that? You see it move? Very nice. It's working. Okay, bottomed out on this side. Let's release the tool. 
You know what, just for fun, let's see. I wasn't supposed to do that. Let's see if the air hammer can just uh, run this thing off. Some light hammer tap action. No. Yes. Okay, it's out. Let's get a hold of that cup. Was this the frozen side? Yeah, this is the side that was uh, that was seized up. That's interesting. That's not gonna come off. Is this one seized up? That one is also seized. I might have to cut this off because if I can't get the cups off, then I can't get this uh, yoke off of the uh, the U joint. Hmm. Let's get rid of some of this rubber business because it takes up space. If I can. If I can get it out of there, which that's not happening on that side. Let's try to drive it off. There it is. That's nice. Okay, so we're going to reference this. We're not going to turn it. It's going to stay the same way. So we're going to set that down just like that. Keep it flat. And then let's get rid of this one just for fun. Cool, got that one, good. Here, I know we're gonna get confused and you guys aren't gonna like it. So let's just put some marks on this. Big unorganized X and another X. There, now we know where those are referenced. So, next, let's take this guy loose and we'll just set it vertically, I think. that. That should be okay. Set it up right here. Lock it down. Okay, lock that down. Now, you know, I wonder, I wonder if I can just run this out with the impact gun. Let's try it. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work. Nope, not gonna work. That's okay. We can use our big tools to help us. Adapter. Up and over. Center it as best we can visually. There we go. Impact coming in. Let's drive our rod. Try to run it through the rest of the way here. No. I need to try to drive this cup out. There it goes. bit from the other side. Let's tighten down our bikes. Hmm. Need angry pliers. Wiggle. It's coming out. There we go. These aren't even the angry pliers. I figured these wouldn't work and I'd have to upgrade to the actual angry pliers. Okay. Hammer and chisel. More than one way to skin a cat or change a U-joint. 
So now I need to press this whole business back through and get the other side to come out. I don't think this is gonna have the clearance. So we'll just run this in that direction. Gonna go. Negative. Not gonna go. But we're gonna make it. Relief adapter. We'll set the uh, threaded end right on the end of this U-joint. And then just push the other end right back through. Impact. Push it right here. She is. Nope. <laughs> I almost shot you guys with the chisel. That also would not be cool. Seriously? expected to do that's fine I've got a solution for that too that's not it mm, that's not it Now watch this. I don't want to put too much pressure on that flange because you'll break it off, right? But we do have some pressure going on right here. Take the hammer and whack the end of the threads. See how it went loose? See that? We'll tighten it a little more. Yeah. Got it. It's a part. Woo hoo. So now we can prep this surface up. We'll clean it up with a little wire brush here. Wipe all this stuff down, get it nice and clean, and then we can get the new universal joint pressed into position. Goodbye, contaminants. Okay, I think we're good here. Okay, let's get our new U-joint in position. Uh, we need to take note of the position of the grease cert. That is supposed to face inward. That way it can be accessed uh, when trying to service the vehicle. So what we're gonna do is pull these cups off. See all that grease in there? This is good. It's gonna keep those needle bearings in position. If those fall out, the way these old ones did, see that? We're gonna be in a world of hurt. So what we do is we pull off both sides, inspect it, check our reference point, slide that guy in. Oh, look, look at the bearings, see what they did? Right there. A couple of them moved just from removing the U-joint cup. So we're gonna push those all back down. There we go. Now, slide that back over. So the U-joint is now in the cup. 
therefore it cannot go anywhere. And I'm going to very gently use our press without the impact. Well, I don't know, maybe I'll tempt fate and use the impact. Let's see how I feel in a minute. We're gonna use the press to press this cup in most of the way. That way, we can safely put on the other cup without risking loss of the, uh, the needle bearings. And yeah, I think I am gonna go ahead and just use the impact, it's gonna be faster. I feel okay about this, so what we'll do is, and this is the important part, I need to hold on to this U-joint and keep it this way. That way, when I actually begin to press this cup in, it can't vibrate around from the impact and cause, uh, cause the bearings to come out. See how she's going? Let's readjust it. I don't like that. Let's try this way. There we go. See that? Went in perfect. went a little too far and that's okay I'll show you what we can do is we're gonna take our clip and we're gonna install that clip on the u-joint cup right here get on there clip okay that was in position so now we can take our other cup we're going to slide this u-joint away from the bearings in this cup just a little bit. We're not going to slide it all the way out. That looks good. Bearings over the U-joint piece. So now both shanks on this U-joint are engaging the needle bearings in the cups. Okay, This one's engaged. I can feel it. And this one's engaged. If you pull out too far and you feel the thing flop to one side or the other, then you need to go back and check and make sure that the bearings didn't fall out. But this one feels pretty good. So now I need to press that guy in. And I don't mind if it starts pressing on this other cup over here on this side because that one is inboard a little too far. Set this guy up like this. See how it's going in? Oh, it's going in beautifully. Look at that. All right, now we've met resistance. We're checking to make sure everything is still free. And it is. Let's go ahead and push it in some. See this side here? That cup's going to be seated on the other end. All right, a little more after a readjust. Now I can put the clip in on this side. I'll set her in like so. That one's in, but you can see, look here, this U-joint is really tight. And it's really tight because both of the cups on both sides are pressing in on the shanks for the U-joint and there's some friction there. So what we need to do is relax those a little bit. And I can do that with a hammer. What we'll do is turn it and just kind of drive it that way. And what this will do is it will push that cup all the way to the end and try to seat it as far that way as it can. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. We shouldn't see any motion out of it, but we should be able to feel the difference after we're done. See how that's, that's just real tight. I want to tap on this till it loosens up. I think that's a little better. A little better. There's still some play there. That's not enough. Mm. I know. set this down on something solid. 
try larger hammers. Pneumatic hammers, rather. As long as it doesn't hit the, uh, the rubber, we're good here with this. A little better. Still not enough, though. I'm going to take... Here's what I'm going to do. This side I pressed in pretty hard. I'm going to give this side a little bit of a press that direction. And uh, that uh, that should help even it out some. Yeah, let's try the U-joint ball joint press again. One more time. Just a little bit of motion is all we're looking for. There we go. It's tight again, but not as bad. That side of the clip is seated out, and this side, that one's also nice and seated. Okay, I think this is a lot better. We're good here. Nice and free. It's centered. Let's go ahead and get the other side on. Same procedure, we're gonna pull the cups out, inspect them, set them aside. Come here, cup. No sudden movements. Oh, I have to wire wheel this out. Error, error in judgment. Good. Now, back to our U-joint. Ah, I looked over and my camera was off due to excessive heat, so I'm not sure how much of that you guys saw. Um, if it cut out, and I don't know yet, uh, I ended up getting this other cup pressed in and we're now ready to get that clip on the cup and then uh, we'll get the other U-joint kind of pressed in. I, I really hope we didn't lose too much footage. Great way to ruin a good video, Ray. Overheat your GoPro. I'm in the hot side of the shop. There's less, uh, less airflow over here with the exception of like, that little fan, but that one's just not cutting it. So thing got kind of hot. Anyway, we now have one U-joint cup pressed in. The clip is in position. So let's get our tool back off of that U-joint and then we can get the other one in and on. Then we'll set the grease zerk up, and um, unfortunately I can't put these in the truck yet today because I have to, like I said, drive up to Lakeland to pick up the tool, but... Get down there. Let's slide this thing over. Okay. All the needle bearings feel engaged. That's good right there. Come back around this side and we'll press this other cup in position. Feels good. It's in. Now, let's get our final clip clipped in to its groove. Get on there. Well, we can see this one's still binding up a little bit. So let's see if we can't relax everything. Yeah, that side's super free. This one's a little tight. So what we're gonna need to do, we need to go that way with it that way, this direction. Yep, now we're relaxed, look at that. So there's no more internal pressure on the U-joint from the cups. They're all seated with their clips against the, uh, the flanges on both sides. So I think this, is, uh, this one's in good shape. 
That one is complete with the exception of our grease cert. Let's get that guy in next. Real easy to do. Just run it in with a wrench. Spin it around, spin it around. There's the hole right there. Come here. Up. Up. There we are. All right, little grease cert coming in. Eight millimeter wrench. All we need to do is start the threads by hand. Just wrench it down. Now the thing about these is, is folks are encouraged for some reason to just make them super duper tight. You don't do that because these threads tend to not bottom out when you install them. And if you try to force it, you'll break the fitting off and leave the threads in the U-joint, uh, thus ruining said U-joint. So don't over tighten them or strip the threads out. You just tighten it until it stops and then go eh, and we're good. All right guys, that is that. This is one successful universal joint replacement. Uh, let's go back over to the truck and get a few of the steering stuff set up on it. And we're gonna continue reassembly uh, up until the point when I need to go and pick up uh, our press tool for the, uh, the vacuum seals. All right guys, it's road trip time. We're headed up north and uh, kind of east into the center of the state. Uh, we've got to go get the tool for um, those vacuum seals on the front of that Ford. And I was trying to get it delivered down here, but I couldn't get it here in a timely fashion down here. It was an Amazon thing or whatever. So I had it delivered to my buddy Cliff's house. So we're gonna go up there and pick up the, uh, the tool and then come back here. And it looks like I'm working late tonight. I would like to get this thing done and reassembled this evening. Uh, that way I have a fresh start tomorrow because tomorrow's Friday and we have things to clear out of here. So in order to not bore you guys with me just driving around and uh, not talking or talking, I've decided that now would be a good time for a story time, hence the title of this video, Mechanic States I Quit. Um, a lot of you guys have noticed recently that every now and then um, Troy was not present in uh, in the shop and uh, you know for like the past two three weeks I'm getting like the hey where's Troy comments um, the thing is is mr. Troy he has been taking a lot of time off lately um, he's just had some priorities and things he's had to handle and because of that it's been a kind of a conflict in scheduling and he has decided that he would be better off if he took an indefinite amount of time off and uh, he decided he needed to uh, kind of narrow his focus in on some of his other priorities. Um, that being said, he, um, he, he has left. Um, he was kind of trickling down, you know, he, would, he wouldn't work like one or two days a week and then he'd work like a week and then, you know, take a couple days off the next week. And it was, it was getting kind of inconsistent and it was, it was frustrating for him. Uh, so we had a chat the other day. He pulled me into the office and you know said he wanted to talk and and Troy had decided that he uh, His time would be better spent uh, kind of doing his own thing And he's gonna he's gonna strike it on his own and and go his own way and, and more power to him um, I wish him all the best in his endeavors and I hope he finds success in anything that he does uh, But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to guide him and help him in that journey uh, any further so that's, that's where Troy has been, and that's where Troy is going to go. I, I don't expect we'll never see him again because, you know, he, he left in good terms, and we're, we have a cordial relationship. We're all still friends over here. So no, no hard feelings or bad thoughts or animosity or anything of that nature. He just felt it was time for him to uh, kind of handle his own business all by himself, and that's what he's going to go out and do. So I think it would be best if everybody gave uh, Troy some good thoughts and wished him well. And, uh, and uh, like I said, I, I certainly hope he, uh, he, finds, he finds what he needs and he's able to, uh, to achieve his goals because that's what life's about is achieving our goals. So having said all that, I think it would be a very nice gesture if everybody here uh, who is aware of Troy and, uh, and had interest in Troy's success uh, comment down in the comment section below and wish him the best uh, and wish him good luck and uh, if anybody has any kind words to share uh, with our buddy Troy uh, please feel free to take this opportunity to do that right now I'm sure he's going to uh, to see this video and I'm sure he would be happy to see and hear your words of encouragement uh, down in the comment section uh, below
Now, I suppose that brings up the uh, the topic of my other my other guy at work, uh, Dave. And uh, Dave has been uh, Dave's been with us for a couple of weeks now. You guys have seen him uh, kind of in the background. Uh, he's made a couple appearances here and there. Uh, Dave's a little camera shy. Uh, as we all are when we're first exposed to any kind of exposure. But Dave's a little camera shy, so I have not formally introduced Dave uh, via video form to anyone. But um, if anybody's wondering, no, I did not hire Dave to replace Troy. Uh, I hired Dave to expand the shop's operation. And, and then consequently, soon thereafter, uh, Troy decided to depart. Which is okay, I mean, like I said, no hard feelings. But uh, I just want everyone to know, no, I did not hire, hire Dave. Uh, in order to get rid of somebody else. So uh, I, I figured somebody in here would run around and say that, or assume that, or possibly uh, think that, that was the situation at hand. And uh, that's not where anybody, that's not anybody, that's not where I was coming from or what I was thinking uh, at the moment a few weeks ago when, uh, when we brought Dave on board. But I figured that is worth mentioning at this point in time. So that's, uh, that's how Dave got here, and that's why Dave is here. Dave is a phenomenal employee, by the way. I'm so glad he's here. He, uh, he does all kinds of stuff, doesn't give, uh, uh, doesn't, uh, give uh, grief or anything like that. He's, he seems to be a model employee. The man is very morally sound, super nice guy, and I feel very fortunate to have Dave in my life. Still riding along. It's been about 45 minutes. That guy's going way too fast around that corner. No thank you. Ooh, that's a 90 degree turn. Did you see that guy? 50 miles an hour. Anyway, we're riding along. Middle of nowhere. We're out in the middle of the state going to Lakeland from Bradenton, which I was going to go up 75 towards Tampa and then cut across. Uh, but the traffic jam today, this afternoon, is absolutely horrendous and it was like a two hour trip. So I'm taking the back roads. Then it'll only be like an hour and 40 minute trip. It's on uh, that F-250, so I have to go to Lakeland to get it. Why? They can't deliver it? Because, well yeah, they could deliver it, but um, I had to wait an extra day to get it tomorrow. And it wouldn't be delivered. So you're go it wouldn't be delivered till the afternoon tomorrow. Oh. Yeah, and I needed it. This gotcha. I needed it this afternoon, and we tried to, we tried to um, Amazon Prime it to the shop, and then they rejected the order, and it would not deliver it to the shop. So I had to get it delivered to Cliff's house, which is in Lakeland. Oh. So now I'm driving to Lakeland at 6:30, 5:30 to go. Oh jeez. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. It's just what I gotta go do. Okay. I have to do what I gotta do. Yeah. Alright. Well, drive safe. I'm recording you. I want to put you on the internet. You what? I said I'm recording you. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna. We're Aww. Yeah, we're driving to. We're all coming along. I was making a video about the truck and then. And we had to go leave, so now who's we're... who's all coming along? Um, the internet. Oh, hey, internet. Hey, internet. Yeah, it's everybody. Hey, from the, internet. Everybody from the channel. They're coming with me. Oh, oh, that's sweet. You got support. I hope so. I mean, they're not here right now, but I'll, I'll probably post a video later. But they'll be here when you're here, and <laughs> they're here in we'll spirit. Be here. Yeah, they're here in yeah. spirit. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Think so. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a little caught off guard, but yeah. I know. But, I'm sorry. You know, I like glad I, I didn't. Glad I didn't say anything bad. I know. <laughs> yeah. Don't sh hush now. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. Watch out now. Uh. Um. Our son wants to do some sparklers, so. Oh. Do we have any? We do. Oh wow. Okay. So I think I'm gonna. I'm gonna let. Oh my gosh. And now your daughter is lighting a lighter. I've got to go because they are driving me crazy. All right, don't don't burn the house down, okay? Oh no, we won't. We'll we'll burn the the outside down. Yeah, just just set the lawn on fire. That's <laughs> fine. I don't care about that. Yeah, we have some trees we need to get rid <laughs> no, of. No, don't so. burn down my trees. No, not the trees. Well, not the one. No, the dead ones. All right, yeah, you can burn those down. That's fine. All right. Well, oh my gosh. I'll, okay. I'll call you when I'm when I'm done working on this truck tonight. I'll see you later. 
Okay, love you. Love you too. Bye. All right, drive safe. Bye. All right, we are nearing our destination. I hope that the road trip didn't bore you guys too much. We uh, we gotta go up the hill and around the corner, and then we're at Cliff's house, and then we can well, and go see what he's doing, and then go fetch the tool, and then I'm gonna go back to the shop, and I'm gonna put those axles in. That is the plan. Oh look, the Jeep is open. Hmm. Powering down. Cliff, your Jeep is a mess. It's dirty in there. Can I put your Jeep on the internet? It's fine. I'm gonna do it. Put your Jeep on the internet. I like your speakers. There he is. I like your speakers, man. Those are awesome. Ooh, kickers. Shiny. Is this for when your amplifiers catch on fire, you can put them out? Absolutely. Does, is it like a halon system where you pull the pull knob and the whole thing goes off? No. No? You pull the red knob and it comes detached. Do you have to get that inspected? Um. Sure. <laughs> Here I have the unit. Come here. Leave that there for later. That is the seal driver thing. Big bore goes on the seal. It's got a relief in it for the axle to protrude into, and then we smack it with a hammer, drive the seal onto the uh, onto the axle, and then um, hey, don't clean that up. No, leave that there. <laughs> and then uh, once we put this thing in the truck. Then we hammer it in some more and that drives it into the bore of the uh the steering knuckle so that's what we came here for we fetch my box we're gonna get out of here all right so it's the next day uh i had kind of planned on coming back last night with this tool to finish these seals and by the time i picked this thing up it was almost dark and there was just no way no way i was going to drive all the way back here from the middle of the state come over here and work on the Ford. So I've, I've had to malay that, uh, uh, that operation until the next day. So anyway, we need to get this seal driven on to this hub using that tool over there. Now that's not the Ford tool. Uh, the Ford tool is a two piece tool and this one is a singular piece tool. So I'm hoping it still works out. But what we need to do is set this unit up in the vise again, uh, vertically, set the seal on, and then we're going to take that tool and uh, use the tool to drive that seal onto this area here. I have saw outside counsel on this project on, uh, on how this is done. And from uh, the coaching that I received from Aaron at Power Stroke Tech Talk, we're going to, uh, it's gonna be a rather violent operation. And we really gotta put the beans to the hammer. We're gonna have to use the big five pounder, the dead blow and uh, it's gonna be wild, so let's see how this works out here. Let's get this set up. Just like this. There we go. That's in there, nice. Make it tight. Lock her down. Now uh, the seal, that's the outside part of the seal. That's our inner part. She's gonna go just like so. And we hammer it on. We need to clean this surface up some with a scrubby, maybe a little bit of brake clean, and then we'll get to uh, get to pressing that unit on. I seem to be lacking green scrubby pads. You know, the ones for like your kitchen, your pots and pans. So we'll just use a uh, little wire wheel instead. That should be sufficient to, uh, to clean up the surface here. Oh yeah, that's fine. Make it shiny. Give it a wipe. Now this is the crazy part. Set that up like so. Then the tool goes in position like that. See that? So we're nice and lined up. Now we take the big hammer and let it rip full speed ahead. Smack that thing down until it bottoms out. And then we can uh, drive it into the, uh, the knuckle. All right, so like I said, I'm following the advice of uh, outside council here 
So we're gonna give this uh, the beans with the big hammer. It's the biggest hammer that I have. And I understand you line it up, whack it. Did it go? Kinda. Wow. Aaron, you were not kidding. This is no joke. I've never driven a, driven a seal that aggressively before. It's on there. Let's give it a couple more. I think it's on. All right, got it. Check that out. It's in there. You can see the seal is still able to rotate, which is good. Let's get this thing out of the vise and back over to the truck we go. Let's get her installed. Back at the right front knuckle. Let's get back in here with that same wire wheel and we're gonna clean up this ID interior bore here. Get rid of all the, the nasty in there and then uh, we'll drive this unit home. Thank you. Her white, looking good. Let's get this front surface next with a uh, little bit more of an aggressive pad. So since the rust is a little bit more built up on this front surface, we're gonna knock that off with uh, just a pneumatic ziz wheel. Connect to the compressor, slightly loud noises. <laughs> Much more effective. Very good. So one thing to note with like a tool like this is you always got to keep it moving because if you don't, it'll start cutting away metal and it'll uh, it'll make that surface uneven and put divots in it. So when polishing with something like this, always keep it moving, kind of like spray paint. Yeah, when you spray paint, you don't just sit there in one spot and shh, you got to keep moving it around. Same thing with the, uh, the sander. So that's looking pretty good. Decrustify it all the time. Bye, nasty. All right, that's nice and clean and prepared. Axles coming in, cleaned off the splines. We're gonna run this down the tube. All right, so I kind of forgot some lubricant on that seal, so. I'll come in on the back side here and just give it a couple sprays. Make sure that seal can come and be pressed in quite nicely like. A little bit of lube. There we go. Okay. Okay, moment of truth time. There's our tool. Let's get it straightened out. Send it. Not enough. Still not enough. I got it. Mostly. It's supposed to go in until this uh, lip right here stops flush against the face. It's not doing that. 
try to hit it high. Whoa! I wanted to hit it high, but not that high. Yeah, there we go. Couple more. Got it. Woo! That was a lot of work. Look at this over here. See how it's flush? That's what we're looking for. Flush fit against the, uh, the hub right there. So that seal is driven, it's in, it's all the way. Woo, that was a workout. One is done, next one. Okay, I'll take my tool back. Aaron, you were not kidding there, brother. The steel is no joke. Alrighty, back at the bench, we've got the short shaft in the vise. Uh, same procedure as the long shaft. We're going to set up our seal and then drive the seal in with the five pound mallet. So we've got another seal. Interestingly enough, these say Fomico on them, you know that? but they came in a Spicer box. So looks like Spicer bought a bunch of these aftermarket or bought a bunch of these for Ford and then repackaged them and then they're selling them aftermarket. Interesting. Anyway, that guy goes right there, and same as the other one, give it the beans. Make sure that's nice and tight. Get it? I think so. Bottomed out. That one's good. Okay, back to the truck. Let's go drive this assembly into the driver's side of the axle. He's not, he's... Let's get this thing out of here. Heavy. Alrighty, back over here at the left front, that's driver's front wheel. We're gonna hit this uh, bore on this knuckle with our wire wheel inside, clean it out. Get rid of the debris and the rust. We need a very nice, smooth, cleaned out surface. As you saw on that other side, the seal does not go in willingly. Ah, that was gross. I flung dirt and rust in my face. I did not appreciate that. There we go. All right. A little bit of de degreasing. Wipe her out. Throw some lube in there. There we go. Now we can get the other shaft pushed into position here. Okay, short shaft coming in. I'm minding that seal. We need to put some lube on that seal. There's a seal on the tube, there we go. The seal on the other side is at the differential, but the seal on this side is at the outside of the tube. Squeeze that guy in, there we go. Okay. Coming in with the mallet, let's just send it in a little bit farther. 
we have to spline it up. There it goes. So now the inside of this shaft is splined up with the differential in the axle. Let's get our tool set up. And it's uh, time to start sweating. Stay. All right, we're going for it. Big Tamer Haps. Now we can get the hubs on, backing plates, the lights, wheel speed sensors, and we'll put all the steering linkage and stuff back together as well. All right, left front wheel hub coming back in. It's got some grease on the seal in there. We've got our four studs, backing plate. Basically, we just slide that guy right in position, give it a couple whacks with the mallet to drive the, uh, the O-ring seal in, and then that hub's installed after we run the bolts in on the back side. There we go. Here, let's get our wheel speed sensor bolt connected. That's the first fastener that has become tight. All right. Now we need to get the two big nuts on the back side here and we can bolt that hub down. Yeah, it's funny. I said two bolts. It's actually four bolts. I don't know why I was thinking two. I might have like cranium fatigue from all that hammer swinging. And it's nuts, not even bolts. I really can't get my words right on this one. Yeah, getting tired. I'm still kind of tired from my field trip that I had to take to go and pick this thing up. A tool. Anyway, let's spin it around. We'll get the nuts on the other side here. All right, we're tight. That is secure. Let's go get the other side next right front knuckle coming in. We're on the other side now, back and plate. I learned from my mistakes. We're gonna feed in that wheel speed sensor right now. And get those big old studs lined up. Put that guy through. Is that right? Oh, no, 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 I'm horribly wrong. What have I done? I was 90 degrees off on the backing plate. I knew that wasn't looking right. Come on, you, get in there. There we go. Put that guy down. Ding! All right, that's in. Good. Let's get our set screw in. It's not a set screw. We'll just get our screw in, our bolt, for the sensor. Click. That's good. And then, got our four nuts. Not two nuts, four nuts. Swing around our back side right here. Screw these guys in. Then we'll run those down. Right now, while we're here on this side, that one's on. I know it's a little dark in there. Click. All right. That's two. Let's get our rear two. Oh, my AC machine is done. I heard it beeping at us. Lauren was commenting on how large this truck is. It's like a whole class on its own. And it really is. There we go, that hub's good to go. Beautiful. Well, now we're here, let's go ahead and get our big snap ring on and then we'll put our locker in and then we'll snap ring and then locker the other side. All right, here comes our very large snap ring. We're gonna open that guy up. 
slip it up and over that axle. Opening the snap ring. Okay, it's over the axle. Now, I just need to seat that guy. Get it to snap into its groove. I think it went, did it snap in? Yeah, yep, that's in. Okay, snap ring's in position. Now we need to just get our hub in place here, bolt that guy in, and uh, this side's good to go. Incoming manual locker. We cleaned that guy up a little bit, sprayed it off. Got a light coat of lubricant on it. Okay, that thing's splined in. Couple fasteners, three to be precise. There we go. Wrong size, correct size. Okay, let's check function of the locker. We should be unlocked. And that locks us in. We're good, we're locked. Unlock one more time. And it has released. Oh yeah, that's how she's supposed to function. Beautiful. And additionally, it also has a, uh, a vacuum locker, hence the purpose for that big giant seal right there. So you apply vacuum to it with a vacuum pump and you can lock it from the cab without coming out to turn your hubs. That's like a, a backup more than anything. All right, 60 pound brake rotor coming in. Slip that guy over the studs. Get you set up. And then comes our wheel spacer. We gotta have the spacer. So let's go ahead and bolt this thing down. That'll help keep the rotor straight. It'll make it easier to get the, uh, the caliper in position. Let's get him tight. not centered. Bottom it out. There we go. Bottom this one out. That's good. Should be centering up now. Should. Torque you later. Time to hang the brakes. Hang the caliper, rather. Now one of the pads fell out of it earlier when I was banging on stuff, so we need to squeeze that pad back in. Hope I can do this without pulling the caliper apart. I think I can. Gotta push that guy in. There we go. Good, so our pad's back in. Let's untwist the hose. This is how hoses get twisted. And we'll slide that guy right back over top. Get in there, please. There we go. Got her. Need two bolts. Caliper bolts coming in. We get that first one started. That's going to hang on to the weight, so I can't drop it. There we go. And then the bottom one around the back side. Wiggle it some till the threads line up. That's good. And then impacts with the 21 yet again. Beautiful. That side's good. One more time on the other side and then we'll get the steering stuff taken care of. Circumnavigating the Ford once more. Back around here. And we're looking for this side. Snap ring time on our axle. Just make sure that's good. You guys down here. We've got our big, whoop, gravity. We've got our big snap ring in hand. Snap ring pliers. And we're gonna open this unit up. Slide that ring over the axle and get her seated in position there. 
so it's over. It was over. I lost it. Ting. Lost it again. Double ting. I gotta pull the axle out some. Pry bar action, here it comes. That should do it, that's enough. There we go, slipped in. I saw it, I felt it, I heard it. Let's get our cap back on. Or our locker, rather our manual locker. Slide this guy in, give it a push and a turn and a wiggle. Three fasteners. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, cinco, seis. <laughs> That's good. Let's function check the locking mechanism. So we should be unlocked. And let's lock it. Now we're locked. Unlock it and we are free. Okay, the locking mechanism works. Same thing, rotor, spacer, and caliper. Whoa, more metal. That's why these trucks weigh nine, 10,000 pounds. They're made out of steel. Heavy stuff. Rough country wheel spacer coming in. It's ready to rock and roll. Uh, what I'm gonna do, do something differently because that other one was kind of flopping around. We'll, uh, I'll try to put the, one of the bottom ones in first, just to bring this thing into alignment. Let's see what happens here. See, the thing is, is these are lug-centric spacers. They're not centered on the hub. So it uses the lug nuts to center everything and make it uh, the right orientation. See how I can't fit the socket in now? This thing is turned slightly. So you have to kind of work up to it as they bottom out. See, that one didn't do it. Here, give it back. Ooh, that's getting hot. All right, that guy's bolted in. Let's get our caliper in position and then bolt it on. Okay, let's grab this uh, 30 something pound caliper right here. Get this guy set up in its position and it looks like one of the pads fell out of this one too now let's just put you back where you go give her a flip line it up it's heavy stuff oh, pad fell out again bear with me there we go wiggle that guy right on in there all the way perfect two big old bolts grab the top one I'm turning the bolt while I kind of jostle this around and that's sort of giving me uh, reduced friction on those threads so I can uh, screw them in. So that one's in, bottom one. Whew. Nice. Impacts. The two are done. Move on to the steering. Okay, that was one outer tie rod changed out. I know we're doing this in light speed. Uh, there's a lot of work to catch up on here, so we're gonna take our bar, flip and flop it around, and pull out the other tie rod uh, just the same here. Lock that down, bolts coming out, and then we can return to light speed. Look at that one break the uh, vice loose again. There we go. And we're out of here. Back to the truck. Back to reality. Da, 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 da. There we go. All right, here we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set this bar right up on top of that guy there to take the weight. And I'm going to start over on that side, get that tie rod in, and then we'll finish off uh, over here on this side. Stay right there. It's balanced. Look at that. 
Let me squeeze on by you guys. And over here, we'll maneuver this thing up into place. I think it went up, yeah. And we'll get the nuts on. Now let's get our castle nut set up here, like so. And we can go ahead and start to tighten this guy down. It's gonna draw the tie rod up into the knuckle. And a little more. It's good. Here on the passenger side, we, uh, we do something similar. Uh, let's lose the zip tie that's hanging onto this tie rod here. And what we've got to do is put the big end down through the knuckle and then it has to meet up with the other end of this bar as it goes through and then we bolt them together simultaneously. That one goes all the way down, shove it through. So we pick one of them up, push one of them down and I'm trying to get a hold of enough thread here. Yeah, I'm not getting enough thread. This is not aligned just properly yet. There we go. Now I've got enough thread come through. Beautiful. So I'm reaching down. Let's get our nut on there. That guy is tightish. Thread it in. A little bit of impact action. That's tight. And then we've got our little locking. Uh, uh, wow, that uh, crown castle nut thing. Um, words are escaping me today. The fatigue is real. At the end of the week, tired. We have our cutter pin keeper. There we go. We'll call it that. Why not? Call it whatever you want. It identifies as a keeper. Cancel. Wrap that guy around. So that's pinned on both sides and toy like a tiger. While we're here on this side, let's drop our sway bar down onto the links. And the other side looks like it's lined up. So we'll pull that guy down, throw one of the fasteners on. Got it right here. Let's tighten this guy up and then we'll hit the other side. Need a deeper socket, looks like. Okay, here we'll just switch out the whole tool entirely. One's tight. A lot of noises too. Let's go move on over to the other side. We'll tighten that sway bar link down. And then we can start to recheck everything because we're coming up on the end except for this connection here with those uh, steering stabilizers. That's tight. Rolling around. And we need to set this up however, however that went. I think it was, yeah, it goes like that. That's it. Okay, so first, we need to pull this hardware out. Get this out of the way. Set that down because I want to put the small bolts in first on the back side of the plate. So let's drop those guys down. Got two of those. And then we need to compress these uh, steering stabilizers and then drop the bolts in. And uh, oh, that's not easy to do. <sighs> wow. Yeah, that's a uh, workout for the abs, I'd say. Oh no, it's going back. Wrong. Get over here. <sighs> Fail. Aha, got it. Okay, that one's in. It's in enough. Let's put the washer and the nut on it. One more stabilizer on the other side. I've got a push on this one. That's kind of harder. Humans are better pushers than, or not better pushers than pullers. We're built for pulling. I'm not pushing. 
Oh, almost. Halfway there. Whee! Yeah. More. Yeah. Wouldn't it be easier if you did something easier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always easier when you do it somebody else's way. Oh, no, you don't. There we go. Got that one through. Beautiful. There's our nut. Let's get some torque action on here. Ring. Nice. All right, those guys are tight. So what I need to do is get the back two, uh, those rear two fasteners in position up in the hole there. Let's get those guys on. I'm missing one of my nuts. We got one. Come on. I'll get it. Seriously? Hmm. What is the problem? I know. I'll run the wrench in from the back. Back by the wrench. Oh, there. And I need one more nut, which I found it. It's right here. Got it. Put that on our other bolt. The music stopped. Oh no. Must be all out of Wi Fi. This was easier to do taking it apart. Okay, steering stabilizers are now reconnected. We did it all wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Moog parts, uh, one of them had a, uh, a Zerk fitting for right over here and i need not neglect that because that would be bad so let's get that guy screwed in eight millimeter we'll run this thing down and again we're not gonna break it off i don't think the original one had that little uh what you call it on there you guys remember i don't anyway three spittings in place all right, guys. Let me uh, let me get those light things reconnected real quick, and uh, I'll be right back. Quick recap: so we got our wheel lights on, spacers are on, brakes are on, wires connected, tie rods on, tight, 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 tight. All this stuff's tight. That's tight. That's tight. All is well right here. The only thing we lack is some decrustifying with my fingerprints on the rotors. Dude, nice and shiny. Goodbye, flangey prints. We don't need that stuff embedding into the pads. We get rid of that. Give her a turn. That was a cool effect. See that? Wipe that one down. I'm making a mess. Whee! Hey, look. I got a warrant in Canada now. Spray clean. Organic compounds. go give her a spin a little bit more wash down action good to go all right 37 inch wheels and tires let's get these things up in position here there we go right on the studs beautiful one side let's go back to the other side okay wheels on nascar make them tight
All right, that was done. Other side. Circumnavigating the board for the finalized time, I think. We're almost there, fellas. Almost there. And ladies. Can't forget the ladies. We love the ladies. No, seriously, though. Especially around here. This channel is point zero four percent uh, female viewers. Um, not counting the wives and the girlfriends that are also watching. I'm thinking that's because the channel is logged into the dudes' uh, account, not the ladies' account. Nick. Yeah, 0.04%. According to the analytics. Torque you later. Okay, let us go lift this thing up some. We'll get our safety jack out from under the vehicle and then we can set her down. And I've got to fill the oil back up. We did an oil change on it, but I got to set her down and then we'll take her out on the road here. We'll get some hydraulic pressure built up because this thing's sitting on the lock. Moving on up. There we go. We'll start the flex. And she's off. Lift off. Anti-gravity achieved. All right, off the lock. Lock release and send her down. Slowly like. Wiggle all the way down. There we go. Speed it up. And contact. Down she goes. Beautiful. Moment of truth. Let's fire it up. Take her out on the road. Make sure our steering wheel's not sticking. Prep the thing to go over to the alignment shop. I think we can call this one pretty good. Key it on, restarting the engine. All right, turbine power. All right, wheels feeling good. Let's get this unit pulled out. It's gonna be a tight squeeze. There we got her. Gotta kick it out wide. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we're gonna fit. No problem. All right guys, feeling pretty good so far. Let's take it out, up over the bridge, get some speed going here, and make sure this thing feels pretty good. Uh, so far, I have the steering wheel mostly straight. I don't think it's gonna take a whole bunch of uh, adjusting to get it right, which is good. What we're really looking for though is a sticking condition. If you recall back in the first video on this, uh, on this truck, if you turn the wheel this way, it would stay that way. If you turn it that way, it would stay that way, and it felt a little bit loose, so, we need to make sure that our sticking binding business condition is uh, no longer present. I'm going over everything in my head. Wheels are tight. Tie rods are tight. Axles are tight. Everything's tight. Oh, I see a return happening. Good. Right turn. Nice. Pew, 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 pew. All right, we're pretty good here. Beautiful. Full beans, traffic's clear. Let's ride. Start a, 
bit of a turn and it centers. Cool. Yeah, we need to get the thing wheel aligned and then uh, we'll do one more test drive after that. But I do believe that this uh, front end rebuild slash repair on this 2016 Ford F250 with a 6.7 turbo diesel is complete. Things in really good shape. Front end's nice and tight. Rebuild, refresh is complete. More importantly, we got rid of that binding U-joint up front and the axle tube. So all that being said, folks, I have nothing more to offer you on this particular video series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series on this truck. Uh, again, if you missed uh, part one or two, this video is part three. But if you missed the other two parts on this particular truck, just go down and check the links inside of this video's description or the link down in the pinned comment, and it will take you back in time uh, to the part one and or part two, whichever of those you prefer. I'm going to go ahead and close this one out right about now. I'll do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If, in fact, you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that. Also, in the comment section down below, do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourself a fantastic day. See you guys later in a video, in a Ford F-250, in a front-end rebuild, in a test drive, ending up transmission.